Hey guys, Brandon with Flying Miata back with another FM Live. Today we're going to talk about oil changes and some tips and tricks to make it a little, do your oil change better, easier, so on and so forth. So as always, if you guys have questions, drop them in the comments. We'll get to them at the end. So the first question is, when should I do my oil change? Generally speaking, the factory intervals are probably going to be fine for you. That having been said, if it's a track car, maybe you need uh, shorter interval intervals because you're pushing the car really hard. If it's, you know, maybe it's a daily driver, but it's all highway miles, you have a catch can, which makes a huge difference to the life of your oil, by the way, shameless plug, um, and synthetic oil, then you can probably extend it out a little bit farther. So if you wanna go based on the condition of the oil, the right way to do it is to send it out to have it analyzed, all that fun stuff. The more realistic way to do it is to pull your dipstick, which I can easily do on this broken dipstick thanks to our dipstick handle. But you can look at the condition of the oil. So I can see here, this stuff isn't brand brand new because it would actually be kind of difficult to see, but it's very new. I don't really need to worry about it. And it smells like oil. So if, if I was not able to see the dipstick through the oil, that's an indication that your oil is needs to be changed. And if your oil smells like burning, uh, like, like burnt oil, uh, then that's another indication that it's time to do an oil change. So that's a way you can do it. Um, requires a little bit of guesswork there, but not, not too bad. Um, and when in doubt, change it early. Too early is better than too late. It kind of seems like a given. So the first thing you want to do is drive your car. So your oil should be at least 140 degrees uh, Fahrenheit before or when you drain the oil. So go out, drive the car, you know, 10 minutes drive or so should be sufficient. Then come home, get it up and, and get all of your stuff together because you do need to let it sit for about five minutes to let all the oil drain out of the engine into the oil pan and then you drain the oil. So what I like to do is get the car in the air lift, ramps, jack stands, whatever. Uh, the only thing there, obviously make sure it's safe. Please don't crush yourself with the car. Uh, and you want nose up or level. You don't want tail up because then depending on what generation you're talking about, uh, there's a, a greater likelihood of some oil getting stuck at the front of the pan and you basically getting an incomplete drain on the system. So do that. And then you want to get your supplies together. So you want to get oil, naturally. Uh, we highly recommend synthetic. It lasts longer um, and it has better protection and there's a bunch of other advantages to it. Make sure you get the right viscosity as well. So what we do is 1030 on naturally aspirated NAs and NBs, 1040 on a forced induction NA or NB, 520 on the NC and 020 on the ND both of which are the factory viscosities. You can bump the viscosity up a little bit if you truly have heavy conditions, uh, extreme conditions for your car, but you are going to you know, lose a little bit of power. It's, it's gonna be pretty small, but you're gonna lose a little bit of power and that kind of thing. So generally speaking, I would stick with Mazda's recommendations unless you have a truly legitimate reason to deviate. I've got a brand new oil filter. Uh, you want to make sure it's a high quality oil filter from a trusted source, such as Flying Miata. Uh, this is a stock NA NB oil filter. We also have our high capacity, which is about 40% bigger. So it just has more surface area to filter things out a little bit better, uh, all that kind of stuff. You want to make sure that it has a check valve inside the oil filter. If it doesn't, then your oil will drain back to the oil pan much more quickly and you'll get more starts with no oil pressure that's gonna happen, it's okay, but we wanna lessen that as much as possible. You also want to have a new crush washer for your drain plug, and ideally a magnetic drain plug uh, to catch all the nasty stuff inside of your engine. So, those are the supplies. In terms of tools, you want a drain pan. Um, this is my own gross drain pan from home that I brought in specifically for this purpose. Uh, but point being, it, it's reasonably sealed. So I don't have to worry about it sloshing. It's got a little lip there so that oil filter can drain, easy to, to pour out, that kind of thing. Drain pan, 
gloves, uh, textured gloves, will definitely make your life easier. Uh, paper towels and then wrench and such, obviously to get the drain plug out. We do have a handful of tools that will make your job, make your life easier. Um, these are both thread in oil funnels. So they thread directly into the uh, valve cover. You can see this is for the NA and NB. This is for the NC and ND. We do have both of these versions for both or for all four generations. So uh, this guy is super easy big mouth to hit. It's got a base for you. Uh, this one, less expensive, allows you to reuse the funnel that you already have or just pour straight into that if you're a daredevil or if you have a redline bottle because that is the right size without a cap. But that's the right size, drop it in there, easy peasy. And a new product that I am excited about and uh, quite frankly a little uh, surprised that we did not come up with this earlier is this guy. So this is an oil filter drain funnel for the 1.8 NAs and NBs. 1.6 guys, sorry, you don't have an oil cooler, won't work for you. But uh, this, the way this works, it clips onto the stock oil cooler right here, goes right there. So all the oil that comes out, I'll get out of the light, all the oil that comes out of the filter drops into the funnel is routed down to your drain pan, easy peasy. You can uh, you can put like a Tupperware or something down there. That'll catch, you know, 70% of the oil, but it's not gonna catch 100% of it, which this one will. So that one's gonna make your life way easier. So once you have all of that, your car is in the air, you've waited your five minutes, you wanna take the cap off of the engine that's gonna help the oil flow through much better because it doesn't have to suck air in through the drain plug. Pretty straightforward. Um, get underneath the car on an ND, you gotta take your undercover off uh, and pull the drain plug. Let it drain until it's dripping as opposed to a stream. It's kind of a general rule of thumb. You can't really wait too long, but if you're in a rush, make sure it's at least dripping and not a stream. Put your drain plug back in once you're done make sure you've got a new crush washer tighten it down to about 25 pound feet so uh, and then we need to take the oil filter off so on the nc and the nd you can see over here uh, this is the nc it's all the way at the bottom of the engine so reasonably easy uh, to get access to same thing for the nd the subframe is pretty close there so it's not quite as easy as it looks here uh, but it's really not too bad for the NA and NB, it's definitely a little bit more of a headache. Uh, what I like to do is kind of come in, so the subframe is here. I like to come in from the wheel well area here and loosen it that way, and I can get it with my hand. Um, if you're on jack stands, you'll probably, your life would be a lot easier if you took the uh, front right wheel off, because that'll get you access more or less kind of sort of straight in there. Uh, the other thing, if this is in your way, this intake manifold brace, go ahead and remove it. Uh, my car, personal car, hasn't had one of these for about 100,000 miles, and my manifold hasn't fallen off yet, and that's pretty standard for cars around FM. So intake manifold brace, really not that critical. So go ahead and take it off if you want to for better access. Now, according to Mazda, you should use a cup-type oil filter wrench which is basically a gigantic socket that goes on the end of the oil filter. If the oil filter wasn't over tightened to start off with, you probably don't need that. But if you are having trouble with it, uh, then that is a good option. And those are, those are commercially available. So, um, yeah, do, do put your gloves on for that. It's going to make a mess. Uh, again, with the funnel here, it's really not going to be too bad with, with the other two. It's nice because the filter is vertical, so it's just gonna come down the filter as opposed to get onto everything, but it is going to come out of the filter and get on your hands and on the filter and all that. So be prepared for that. Actually, another thing that can be convenient there is just a big sheet of cardboard because uh, underneath the car, because you may, you know, my drain pan's here, but now I've got a drip here that I didn't anticipate type of thing, so. So the way I like to do oil filters is to pre-fill them. It's not the most critical thing in the world, but that's gonna decrease the amount of time your engine is without oil and oil pressure. 
because when you put a dry filter in, the oil pump has to fill the oil filter and then it will start to flow to the rest of the engine. Um, on an NC and ND, you can get them kind of full. You know, bear in mind that you still have the threaded piece that goes down in there, so it'll fill them all the way up. On an NA, NB, the way I like to do it is basically fill it up once and then let it sit. That oil will, will soak into the filter media in there and then spin it on. Don't try to fill it up more than that because it's just gonna pour out. Make sure that you grease your O-ring. Um, just the motor oil that's in there is fine, but you gotta make sure to do that if it's not pre-done. Uh, the rule here is spin it down until the, the O-ring touches the base and then one full turn. If you want a specific number, according to Mazda, it's about 10 pound feet. One full turn past that is, uh, past contact is good. Again, you don't want to get it crazy tight. There's no reason for it. You might damage the O-ring, I suppose, but realistically, it's just going to make it a royal pain for you to get the oil filter off next time. So plan ahead there. Uh, and then fill up the engine. So again, these guys will make your life much easier. Um, fill up the engine, start it, make sure there's no leaks, shut it off, wait five minutes, check the level. It really should be right around the full mark. Um, the, the engine is not in danger of anything as long as it's between low and full, uh, but you want it to be pretty close to the full mark. Sometimes for track cars with giant tires, lots of grip, so on and so forth, uh, you might overfill a little bit. Just for G-forces, if you're going on track with a really long sustained corner, then the oil can kind of float over to one side of the pan. You could overfill a little bit for that. For most cars, for kind of general track day cars, for street cars, just fill it, fill it up to the full level. Um, and then on the ND, obviously you've got to put the undercover panel back on. So, and of course, goes without saying, uh, your rain gutter is not the appropriate place for engine oil. Uh, a lot of local auto parts stores will take your used oil, especially if it's uh, kind of private quantities. You bring them a gallon or two kind of thing. You bring them 50 gallons, they're going to say, nope, sorry, you got to go somewhere else. Um, and lots of times your local dump should have a ha hazmat department uh, where they will take it as well. So just make sure you get rid of it the right way. So that is how you do an oil change and some of the tips and tricks that we do. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a handful of questions here. Again, if you have questions, drop them in the comments. We'll get to them at the end of this whole thing. So first question, intervals. Not a surprising question. Again, if your usage is reasonably normal, then you can probably uh, use the standard factory intervals. Uh, if you, Synthetic oil, um, catch cans, which do a, quite a good job of uh, filtering out a lot of the gross stuff in your oil, uh, can extend the interval. Again, be conservative. If you're getting nervous, just go ahead and replace the oil. Um, in my car, 96 turbo, redline, synthetic, uh, synthetic religiously, and a catch can, I've actually pushed the oil change intervals pretty far, and it's worked really well because I go based on the condition of the oil and the catch can makes a huge difference. And I use the high capacity filter. So, um, again, track car uh, would kind of be vice versa. Check it, as mentioned, based on the color, based on the smell. Uh, when in doubt, change it early. Too often is better than too, uh, too little. So, so, should a track car run a different weight than street? It, it, it kind of depends. Probably not um, for for our turbo cars because there is a little bit more plumbing and NAs and NVs do not run particularly high oil pressure to start off with. We do like the 1040. Uh, there's more heat in the oil because of the turbo. There's more oil plumbing in there. You're making more power, so on and so forth. Um, so that's a reason to run the 1040. Otherwise, really the right answer is watch your oil pressure gauge. Uh, and as long as it's okay then you're okay with the viscosity that you're running. If it's making you nervous because it's really low, maybe you need to bump that viscosity a little bit. Um, I will also note again, NAs and NBs run pretty low oil pressure typically. Also, make sure your oil pressure gauge is correct. And if that's, basically if you don't believe it, get a second gauge, uh, maybe a more reliable one, just to 
make sure before you decide that you don't have any oil, uh, or, but so, sorry, before you decide that you don't have any oil pressure. So, okay, best way to reach the NA and NB filter. Uh, again, I like to get in through the wheel well. You can take the wheel off uh, if need be. And then this intake manifold brace, you can take that off to get better access to it as well. Uh, how to reach it on an NC, straight up from the bottom. The subframe is, is kind of in the way there, so it's a little bit tight. Excuse me. Uh, but it should be doable. If it's, if it's a grip issue, uh, then I would recommend one of those cup-type oil filter wrenches, uh, which would specifically be a 76 millimeter 15-sided wrench. Uh, but that should help you break that guy loose and get it out of there. Horsepower gains and losses due to different weights. So if you are in an extremely rule limited class and a third of a horsepower is going to make a difference to you, maybe it's worth running a lighter weight oil to get that tiny little increase because theoretically speaking, the thinner to a point the thinner your oil, the more horsepower you're going to make. Realistically speaking, it's a pretty small difference. Um, Redline is uh, very proud of their oil as well they should be, and it's awesome and we love it and we sell it. Um, and they claim a one to 3% horsepower increase by using their oil. One to 3% is something for sure. It's not gigantic, whether it's worth, uh, I mean, that's kind of a different argument, but. Whether it's worth running a, a lower viscosity, which puts your engine at higher risk in order to get that tiny amount more power. Personally, I would say no. I'd rather make five horsepower less and know my engine's gonna run forever, but it's your phone. <clears throat> um, I will also say be suspicious of additives that claim increased power. Uh, we've only tested one. We did test one and it made exactly zero difference. So in terms of oil additives. So if it sounds like snake oil, it probably is. Uh, okay, recommended oil, again, naturally aspirated NA and B, 1030. Forced induction, NA and B, 1040. Reasonably normal NC, 520. Reasonably normal ND, uh, 0, 020. Uh, interestingly, according to Mazda, 530 and 520 are recommended viscosities in countries outside of the US, Canada, and Puerto Rico, which is weird. Um, but I take that to mean if you wanted to run a 520 or even a 530, that's okay, but you'd still probably be fine with, it, with a, an 020. Um, and maybe a tick better fuel economy, that kind of thing. So, is it better for your oil to be halfway between low and full on the dipstick or should it always be at the full line? Similarly, is it better for the oil to be slightly low or slightly over full? Um, I think we might be splitting pretty tiny hairs here. Uh, if it's a track car and you're having issues with oil starvation on long high G corners, you want to overfill it a little bit. You know, that's a problem you need to address. Outside of that, as long as it's not dramatically over, or under the low line, uh, then you should be okay. You wanna maintain it at the full line because that gives you a little bit of tolerance. So if your car, if you say, oh, well, it's above low and that's fine because it's barely above low, but you don't realize your engine burns oil and fast forward a month and you haven't uh, checked your oil and now suddenly you're out of oil and your engine is cooked, well, that's bad. Um, there's no advantage to running your oil low so aim for the full line. Um, that having been said, if you're you know half under and you don't have any oil on you, that's okay. Drive home, find oil, fill it up. That's not a huge deal. Um, <clears throat> the basically you don't want it to be too full because it's going to aerate. You don't want it to be to be uh, too low because you're going to lose oil pressure and your engine's going to be cooked. Actually, both of those result in, in no oil pressure. So. How do you keep oil from spilling everywhere when changing the filter? Let me yet again point out our awesome new product here. So on NAs and NBs, this is a great way to do it. Um, this is spaced out far enough so that it'll work with aftermarket in normal depth, but uh, aftermarket oil thermostats. So if the filter is here or the filter is here, it's still gonna drop in here. 
The filter itself is still gonna have oil on it, so you're still gonna get your hands dirty when you take it off, uh, but it's not gonna go everywhere else. NCs and NDs, crack it loose, just let it drain, because it's gonna make a mess and there's not really anything you can do about it, but it should make a mess into the drain pan. It shouldn't really run onto other parts of the chassis. Okay, yeah, best easiest way to remove the oil filter, don't over tighten it. If it has been over tightened and you can't get it by hand, use one of those uh, cup oil filter wrenches. That's gonna be your best thing. You can improvise with a strap wrench or something like that uh, before I've heard people say, stab it with a screwdriver. That's gonna make a giant mess and you're probably just going to tear the entire canister and make it way more difficult to get off. So that would absolutely be a final last, I'm at my wits end. I probably wouldn't do it at all kind of thing there. So uh, other maintenance that should be done every oil change. You know, you do want to change the crush washer. Um, the uh, checking your oil pressure is a good idea. I would say rotate your tires, but Miatas are so well balanced that they usually wear tires fairly evenly. So, you know, you can check other stuff while you're in there, but most other things have a, have a longer uh, maintenance interval than your oil change. If you want to be proactive and check your spark plugs, awesome, but you're gonna spend a lot of time checking spark plugs that you probably didn't need to spend, so your call. Okay, does the car have to be warm to drain the oil efficiently? Yes. Um, now that doesn't mean it's the end of the world if you do an oil change with the oil cold. However, when it's hot, it's more viscous, it flows more easily, it's gonna bring everything down with it more easily, you're gonna get a more complete oil change, both from the amount of oil that you get out of the engine and the dirt that it brings with it. So, is it the end of the world if you're stuck? No, that's fine. Should you aim to have the oil warm for oil changes? Yes, definitely. Does Rotella live up to the height? Mm. So Rotella, the short version there, Rotella or diesel uh, engine oils are great for engines because they're high in zinc content, but they are bad for O2 sensors because they are high in zinc content. So if you have an O2 sensor, which I sure hope you do in a car, uh, in any of the cars that we deal with, I would not recommend Rotella uh, because it's gonna introduce new maintenance things that you didn't have to deal with and a little bit more expensive maintenance things. So. So that is all the questions I have ahead of time. Do we have new ones? We do have new ones. Yes? What if I have an oil cooler and I have a sandwich plate? Will the oil filter funnel drain still fit? Uh, yes. So what if I have an oil cooler and I have a sandwich plate? Will the oil filter funnel still fit? Yes. So a sandwich plate, well, in our, in FM speak, sandwich plate equals thermostat because we feel, unless it's a dedicated track car, you definitely should not be running an oil cooler without a thermostat because overcooling your oil is bad. And we'll save that conversation for another day. That having been said, with the thermostat that we use, yeah, it'll work just fine. If your sandwich plate is roughly the same thickness, I wanna say it's probably about an inch, then it should work fine. If you have an abnormally thick one where the filter sticks out to here, uh, no, it's probably not going to work. So that, I don't know what that is, two inches, something like that. So as long as you're under that distance from the oil cooler, then you're good. Also, if your sandwich plate is the same OD as your as the stock oil cooler, or very close, because there's a little bit of spring in this, uh, then you could just clip it on, you might be able to clip it onto your sandwich plate as well, depending on where your hoses come off. So. Anything else? Okay, so that's it. I hope this was helpful. Um, these are kind of some hints that we've picked up along the way that uh, make our lives easier for sure. So thanks as always for stopping by. If you enjoy this, give us a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, uh, and tune in next Thursday. We'll be back with another FM Live. Thanks guys.